our next partner is? They are. I, uh, Cloudbees. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're Cloudbees. I got a personal story with Cloudbees because when Cloudbees started, you know, um, Kosuke, the guy who started the company, well, who is the CTO of the company now, when he started the project Hudson, Kosuke and I used to be at Sun Microsystems and we would literally walk down the hallways asking people for you know spare machines. Hey, you got a spare machine <laughs> that we can plug into the Hudson cluster. The project used to be called Hudson at that point of time. Hudson over a period of time because the legal issues became Jenkins and that's what is famous right now. So Kosuke and I go way back and I, I've worked with a lot of the people at CloudBees very personally, very closely for a number of years at Sun Microsystems. So I'm very excited that you know, CloudBees is here to talk about Jenkins, um, and a lot of our customers use Jenkins. As much as we have code pipeline, code build, code commit, our own managed services, but a lot of it is about, about what our customers want. Here you go, take it away. All right, thank you, thank you. Um, actually, it's interesting that you talk about walking through Sun Halls looking for spare machines, um, because that is still very much a part of the story that Kosuke talks about and very relevant um, to what we're talking about here today. Because when we talk about scaling CI, CD, there's a number of dimensions that are constraints, and resources and servers are one, right? Always are a bit different. Yes, yeah, yeah. Um, so hello, I am, uh, I'm Brian Dawson. I'm a DevOps evangelist with CloudBees, and I have Patrick Wolf, Director of Technical Alliances, here with me today. And we're gonna talk to you about CloudBees Jenkins Enterprise on EKS. So um, we hear a lot about CD and DevOps, but enterprise CD and DevOps is a particularly different beast. Um, as a DevOps evangelist, I have the ability to conduct a number of studies, um, have worked with a number of people on their implementations, and almost without fail, I find that once people come over the resistance of connecting their delivery pipeline from left to right, on one to a few teams, where people really hit their struggle is scaling that up and across the organization. In fact, many times that's where people peter out. We hear a lot about these successes, but if you dig a little further, you're gonna find that they were sometimes done in, 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 in clean labs on greenfield projects, right? Question is, how do we scale? The other question is, what are the components of scaling, right? We don't only need to scale infrastructure by scrounging free machines or leftover machines at Sun, right? Um, or um, by having a scalable cloud-based infrastructure. We also need to scale uh, process and practices. And then ultimately, in support of that, we need to be able to scale the culture across our organizations. Um, and with Enterprise CD, and able to be able to do that, um, there's a couple of things we need to be able to provide, right? We need to be able to adhere um, to, uh, to, to organizational security and compliance. Right, it's one thing to be delivering our new customer facing mobile app using these new practices. It's another thing to, to, to deliver our systems of record, our business critical applications. We need flexibility in an enterprise because we need to be able to support a heterogeneous environment of tools with at least a somewhat homogeneous shared solution. Um, and we need scalability like we talked about, but that's going beyond physical scaling. Right? We absolutely need physical scaling, with, which is you know, something that this, this, this offering helps us overcome, but we need to be able to drive collaboration across teams to propagate best practices. So with CloudBees Jenkins Enterprise, we extend Jenkins. Um, it's important to note that Kosuke is our CTO, um, and, and so really this is building additional enterprise functionality on top of Jenkins that embeds best practices, enables rapid onboarding of teams, makes for or allows for ease of administration, um, and then ultimately enable scalability. Can we go to the next slide, please? So with that, we're happy to announce today through a partnership with, and, a, a, with Amazon AWS to announce the general availability of CloudBees Jenkins Enterprise on Amazon Container Service for Kubernetes, or EKS. Um, Patrick is going to walk us through a demo um, that I will narrate. Um, in this demo, we'll go through uh, installing CloudBees Jenkins Enterprise on an EKS cluster literally in seconds. Um, we'll show how you can rapidly onboard development teams and users, configuring role-based access controls, and standing up um, ephemeral uh, uh, agents um, and quickly standing up masters. Um, we'll show you how you can quickly create delivery pipelines using Jenkins pipeline as code. And then ultimately, we'll show how you can enable automatic continuous delivery and DevOps pipelines 
for teams using, uh, I'm sorry, with shared gates and best practices. So just to get a quick look um, at the architecture um, before we jump into the slide, it's important to note that, um, that what CloudBees Jenkins Enterprise does is leverage your existing EKS or Kubernetes infrastructure um, to give you what we call a distributed pipeline architecture, meaning that we give you a shared platform for your CI and CD workloads while giving the security and flexibility of isolating teams on individual masters and providing them with ephemeral build agents. All of this is managed by something that we call CloudBees Jenkins Operations Center, which we'll look, we'll look a little closer at. And the key thing in it being able to run on your existing um, Amazon EKS infrastructure is that your CI CD workload can be co-located with your, with your, with your run environment. Right, so it supports a continuous delivery workflow deployed into a cloud environment to support cloud native applications. It provides the benefit of easy provisioning and management to shared services for teams. Uh, it, it, it makes it easy for them to onboard. And for individual developers, they get CD as a service. Right, So they can focus on developing instead of building Snowflake CD and DevOps pipelines. Okay. So with that, we'll go ahead and jump right into um, the demo. And so we're going to start, I guess, with the obvious prerequisite for today. Um, you need to have an EKS cluster set up with this. Um, we have EKS Loft. Um, now, this is backed by multiple EC2 nodes set in auto scaling mode um, to help with our scalability. So we're going to start by running kubectl. Um, and applying our CJE YAML file. This is a deployment configuration file um, that set text-based that sets up uh, CloudBees Jenkins Enterprise. Now, I'll also know that this was not sped up or time elapsed. As we see, we do the status check. We can see that we have a pod for our CloudBees Jenkins Oper Operation Center or CJOC ready and available, and like I say, literally in seconds. So let's go ahead and jump over to the web interface and take a look. For Before we move on, Patrick, I'd like to talk real quick about this idea of CJOC. So for those of you that are familiar with Jenkins, and let me do this real quick. How many people in here are familiar with Jenkins? All right, great. Uh, so for those that are familiar with Jenkins, you can probably best explain CJOC, our operation center, as a master of masters. So it enables teams to have their individual Jenkins instances stored in Kubernetes pods, but provides sort of a unified um, layer on top to provide for unified governance, shared best practices, control of access rights, shared templates, et cetera. So we're going to go ahead and create a team using CJOC. We're going to name this team accounting. And fittingly, we're going to choose a dollar bill, and we're going to color that dollar bill green to identify that team. So whenever we look at it, we know what we're dealing with. Uh, Patrick is the administrator, but he's going to go ahead and add another team member. He's going to choose a master recipe focused on Java and web development. And then he's going to go ahead and create the team. And we're going to see it's going to take just maybe a couple of seconds longer than it did to install. That is now complete. And before we talk about creating a pipeline, let's go ahead and jump into the background and see what happened when we created that team. So we're going to go ahead and rub a cube cuddle, get pods. And you can now see that we've stood up a pod for CJOC, which we established earlier. And then just by creating a team without having any consideration of, of pods, infrastructure, VMs, what have you, we have a master available and running um, for that team to build. OK, so let's go ahead and jump into creating a pipeline. Sounds like you guys might be familiar with the concept. We're going to go ahead and uh, use Bitbucket. We're going to look at Patrick's repo, the Spring Pet Clinic repo. And we're going to go ahead and create a pipeline. Now, it's important to note that when we're creating this pipeline, we're creating the pipeline based on a Jenkins file. And this is what we like to call pipeline as code. It sounds like most of you in the room are probably familiar with the concept. Now, let's take a quick look and note that there are multiple steps and stages in our pipelines. Um, first note, we haven't designated an agent. We'll come back to that in a few. We have a first stage, which is run hello world, which is going to grab our environment variable from, from uh, line 19, and it's going to output that. Now go to line 9, we see we have a deploy stage. I want you to, to take a look at that when conditional or that when clause that says when branch master. And we'll go back and talk about that in a minute. 
So this Jenkins file, actually, it's important to note for those that might not know, this lived in the pet clinic repo. So when we mapped to it, we automatically detected this Jenkins file, and now we're in a position where we're running this pipeline on the Jenkins file branch. Now, this is where that conditional comes into play. You can see that we ran the Hello World stage, but we skipped the deploy stage because we were not on a master branch. Why do we do that? Because we are testing a Jenkins file here. So we would not want it to you know, effectively do a production run. Um, if it's not living on a branch, which is suitable and sort of the canonical source of deployment, then we don't want to run the deployment script. So we can go ahead and move on here. And so we're going to go ahead and edit this pipeline. And it's important to note that this is a new UX. This is based on the Blue Ocean user interface, which CloudBees contributed to with the community. Um, but this is available in our commercial office offering CloudBees Jenkins Enterprise. Um, so we're going to go ahead and uh, uh, update our pipeline. We're going to commit it to a new branch. We're going to go ahead and insert master. Now, of course, this is our master branch. We should not be committing directly to our branch. So Patrick will note that this should be a pull request. But for the purposes of a demonstration, we, we can't make break much today. Now, it's also important to note that we did this through the UI, through a text box. Um, but we're now looking at the repo. So uh, uh, the team features in CloudBees Jenkins Enterprise manage committing that back to the repo. And on line 19, we can see our updated text. So with this, we can go ahead and run the pipeline again. We see our two earlier runs. But when we look up at top, we see a run on the branch master. It took two seconds to complete. That's done now. We can drill in. And you can see that we've run our pipeline. We've um, actually identified that we are on the master branch and went ahead and ran the deploy step. So this is, again, a really quick example before we move on of how fast we can get a team stood up without interacting with an administrator, without interacting with, with, with compute resources or infrastructure, run a pipeline, modify that pipeline, and be able to execute our, our you know, delivery of our software. Okay. So now we're going to go ahead and create a team. Again, I said scalability is not just about infrastructure, but also be able to create multiple teams and share best practices. Um, so we're going to talk about what it's calling automatic CD and DevOps with our automatic build project. We are going to use the same master creation recipe that we used for the earlier team. And then we're going to go ahead and create this team. Now, our approach to creating a pipeline for this team is going to be different. It's going to support automation, unified governance, and shared best practices. So instead of creating a pipeline here, we're going to jump out to the classic Jenkins UI, which most of you are probably familiar with. We're going to create a new job or project. And for this job or project, we're going to select a Bitbucket team project which is going to go in and look at our Bitbucket org and scan our repositories and branches uh, within that org. So now we're going to jump in. We've pulled some credential information from CJOC, which is another benefit. We get to store that centrally and push it down. Now, instead of creating a pipeline script, we're going to select custom script, which supports what we call custom marker files. And we're going to tell our custom script to look for pom.xml's in the repos. Okay. And then we're going to input a pipeline script. And we're ba what we're basically saying is, if you find a pom.xml in that repo, run this pipeline script. So Patrick had copied that in. We're going to go ahead and take a look at that. What's important to note is instead of agent none here, we've set up agent Kubernetes. We've created a label, created a label for my pod. This is going to establish a Kubernetes pod. Within that pod, we've created two containers, a Maven container based on the Maven Alpine image, a busy, and a big, busy box container. Now, if we scroll down a little further and we look at stages, we can see that we have a stage called Parallel Build, where we've identified that we want to be able to run the processes in both of these containers simultaneously. Okay, and then we continue through. We have a testing stage and a deploy stage. So we're going to go ahead and run these. Now, while we're waiting for these to get started and spin up, why don't we jump out to the command line again, Patrick, and see what's going on in the background. So if we take a look here um, with Git pods, we can first see how we had our operations center and our accounting team. As we move down, we could see our new master that was automatically created for our new team. And now we could see that we have a pod spun up with our, with our uh, slave um, container 
and our two custom containers that we, uh, that we identified. And now it's up and running. So let's go ahead and jump back to the web UI, Patrick, and see these run. So we're looking at our general SEM step. That's turned green. So we're now able to go look back at our pipeline, and we can see the processes that are leveraging our Maver and BusyBox containers are still running. They're running in parallel. We go through the testing deploy stage, and now that's complete. Now, what's important there, and sorry if we could hold for a sec, Patrick, is that you basically saw us point to a repo, find some Java projects or Maven projects with palm.xmls, apply an already established pipeline script to that, which it can include security gates, testing gates, whatever we deem to be our best practices, without the team having to write a single line of code and then enable delivery of that, and, and enable a delivery of that with parallel processes where we could be forking and testing uh, against two different platforms, what have you. But that's this idea of quickly ramping up and automatically providing teams with continuous delivery and CD best practices, moreover, without them ever having to contact your, your shared services um, admin or a system administrator. Okay, So we're going to go ahead and look. We saw this. We're going to go and look and see that, that these palm.xmls were found uh, across multiple branches, but not only across multiple branches, also across multiple repos, and the exact same pipeline step was run for those. Right, again, shared best practices. So let's go ahead and look at you know, you know, the other part of scalability that we talked about. Right, How are we managing resources? And we can see that. We had spun up um, a ton of containers across a number of pods. Now, it's one thing to be able to spin these resources up quickly without thinking about them. We also need to make them go away. We also need to uh, tear them down. And these are our ephemeral um, build agents. So we could see that we spun these up. We could see them terminating. And we could see that they're done. They've gone away. We have sort of our static resources of our operations center, our accounting team, and our automatic builds team. So we wanted to land back here just to show that you know, this team concept is very simple. We see our two teams that we've created. We did that in, in roughly condensed time, less than five minutes. And we can go on and continue to create teams and scale our implementation just as rapidly. Right? And this is enabled by a mix of having the power of Amazon EKS and then having a tight integration between CloudBeast Jenkins Enterprise and EKS, and then a, a layer of, 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 of scalability, manageability, and unified governance that is provided by CloudBeast Jenkins Enterprise. Thank you. Thank you.